Hey, what's up everybody? This is CLS All-in-One. I recently added a block basement addition to my home, and one of the first steps is pouring the concrete footer. So for this video, I will be showing you from start to finish how I did my footer. So to start off with, I had to determine exactly where my basement foundation location would be. After deciding the location, I had to call in utility locates before I started any digging. And luckily there was no utilities that I had to worry about that was in the way. Because this is a basement addition, I did have to haul some of the dirt away, but made sure to keep enough for backfilling the foundation. To know exactly how far I had to dig down, I had to add the height of the foundation wall that's underground, plus the footer. Then I used a builder's level to take shots and measure exactly how far I needed to dig down. To determine the size of your footer, you will need to check with your local building codes. There are a lot of variables that can come into play, such as soil samples, possible underground water, and much more. Where I'm located, a foundation block wall that is eight inches wide requires a footer that is twice the width with a minimum thickness height of 16 inches. So for my foundation, my footer will be 16 inches by 16 inches. Now it's time to make some concrete forms. I kept mine nice and simple. I just used some four foot by eight foot, half inch thick OSB that I ripped with my table saw into 16 inch by eight foot long pieces. Then I reinforced them with two by fours on the top and bottom of each piece. So with one four by eight sheet, I can make three different forms. And right here, we're securing the two by fours to the top and bottom. And if you want to at this point, you can go ahead and grease the forms. That way the concrete does not stick to them. Or you can do that at a later point, which is what I'm going to do. Now it's time to place my concrete forms inside the hole where the footer is going to be located. And to determine the exact location where my footer is going to be, I've used a combination of measuring a bunch of different points, plus some string lines and taking shots with my builder's level as well. So right here I have a plumb bob that's attached to a string line that's marking the exact depth for the footer. And it's also marking the inside of the footer, that way I know where to set the outside of the footer form. And here's a look at my builder's level measuring rod, and I'm using this to confirm that my forms are indeed in the exact location where they should be. To take these measurements, I am using my builder's level, which is located up on the ground level surface. To secure the concrete forms to the ground, I'm using some concrete steel stakes that are three foot long and five eighths in diameter. And I'm placing these stakes about every four foot on the concrete forms and making sure to drive these into the ground at least 15 inches. To ensure that your concrete forms are square, you can use something called the three, four, five rule. So what you wanna to do to check for square is go ahead and pick one side and start from the corner and measure out three feet and make a mark. Now pick the side that's right next to that and measure from that same spot in the corner and measure out four feet. Now, if you measure the distance between these two points, that should be five feet. If it's not five feet, that means that your forms are not square. And you need to adjust one of your sides to get it to adjust to five feet and make your form square. Now for larger areas, you can just increase the same formula by two. For instance, you can change it to six, eight, 10 or 12, 16, and 20, and this can just keep going on and on. Now let's take a look at the concrete forms. I do have both sides up now, and there's a look at one of the concrete stakes that's supporting the forms. And to join these together where the seams are, I'm just using some two by fours to mend them together. And for some extra support, I also have some two by fours running on the top of the forms to help join these together. And I'm gonna be adding a bunch more of these two by fours because I have some vertical rebar it's gonna be going in place as well. But first, I need to add the horizontal rebar. Now for my area, the building code requires at least two pieces of rebar side by side if it's 16 inches wide. But just for safe measure, I decided to go ahead and add three pieces side by side, and those are centered inside the forms both different directions. And I am using a combination of rebar chairs, rebar baskets, and some rebar tie wire to get these all secured in place. And in addition to all that, I'm also using some concrete stakes. So what I've done here is I've drilled a hole on both sides of the form, right in the center of the form. And then I've slid that concrete stake through there. And that's helping support that horizontal rebar that's inside the form. 
And these concrete stakes will not be permanent. I'll just be using these to help support that rebar inside there while I pour the concrete and pack it in place. As soon as all the concrete's inside the forms, I'll go ahead and remove these stakes because they won't be needed anymore and I have plenty of other supports that can hold up that horizontal rebar. And what I've done here is I've added some two by fours on the top every two foot. And I'm doing this because I'm gonna be adding some vertical pieces of rebar that are four feet long. So I've got these two by fours every two foot. And now I'm gonna drill a hole right in the center of each one of these. And I've also aligned these to where the vertical rebar will go through my blocks as I'm laying them for the foundation. To align the vertical rebar for the block wall, it will be necessary to figure out where your block wall is gonna be centered to know where to start your spacing. Once you figure out the starting point, you just wanna put your vertical rebar every two foot from that point on. So I have all my holes drilled inside these two by fours and now I'm gonna be putting a four foot piece of rebar inside each one of these vertically. And you wanna make sure that the rebar does not come in contact with the dirt. So to avoid that, I do have some concrete pavers that I've broken up into small pieces and I'm putting those directly below the vertical rebar. That way it's making contact with the concrete paver and not the dirt. After I have all my vertical rebar in place and where I want it, I go ahead and tie it to the horizontal rebar to add some extra support. Then you wanna make sure to put some safety caps on top of all the vertical rebar pieces. Otherwise, if you don't have a safety cap in place, if you fall inside that hole on top of a piece of rebar, it could cause serious injury. And I'm sure there's some other methods out there to tie that vertical rebar in place without using two by fours on the top. But for me, it seems to be the easiest way and provides the most support. And just to let you know, I do end up removing all of these 2x4s on the top before the concrete sets all the way. That way I can finish the surface and get it nice and smooth. Now it's time to go ahead and grease the forms if you have not already done that. And this way is super easy. I'm just using some spray lubricant in a can and I'm just spraying the inside edges of the forms on both sides. So I got a couple different brands that I am using right here, but something like WD-40 should work just fine. All we're trying to do is get some lubrication on the inside of these forms. That way they don't stick to the concrete and they come off a little bit easier. And there is plenty of other methods out there that you can use to grease the forms. I hear a lot of people out there use diesel fuel with a rag, so that's another option for you as well. Okay, my forms are now done and ready for some concrete. And I decided to go ahead and use a concrete pump truck. Because the footer location is about six foot underground and I have all this rebar sticking up, for me it made more sense to use a pump truck rather than using slides and chutes to get the concrete to the bottom. The pump truck did cost me an additional $320, but it did save me a lot of labor and it made the job go by a lot faster. To figure out how much concrete you're gonna need for the job, there's all kinds of concrete calculators online such as calculator.net, Inside this, you can type in the inches, and it'll tell you exactly how many yards that's going to be. For my footer, it's going to be about five and a quarter yards. So this was my first time using a pump truck, and I wasn't quite sure what to expect. And it went by really fast. So fast, I could barely keep up. I was able to pour all five and a quarter yards for this footer in about five minutes. Here's some close-up footage showing how fast it's actually coming out in real time. And as you can see here, I'm having a hard time not making a mess. Now with the concrete pump trucks, you can adjust how fast the pump speed is. But at that moment, I was just kind of caught up in it. And I didn't have time to say anything and I just had to go with the flow. After we got done pouring the concrete, it was time to get it packed in place. So we used a combination of trowels, shovels and bars to get all that concrete packed down nice and tight. And you do want to make sure to get that concrete packed nice and tightly. Otherwise, you might end up with some voids inside your footer which could cause it to fail later on. After the pump truck got done pouring the concrete, he did have to flush it out with water back to the concrete truck. Otherwise, they end up with a giant mess that becomes a huge problem. After getting all that concrete packed down in place, it was time to go ahead and adjust all the vertical rebar and try to get those nice and plumb again. Then we also used a level to get them more accurately plumb. After we got all that vertical rebar in place and where we wanted it, it was time to go ahead and start troweling the concrete out and getting that finished smooth. After working on the concrete and finishing it for about 45 minutes, I started to remove some of the 2x4s on the top. But to start with, I only removed half of the 2x4s and waited for the concrete to cure a little bit more before removing the rest of the 2x4s. 
Upon removing those 2x4s where the rebar was located, we went ahead and finished those areas to get a better finish. After the concrete cured just a little bit more and started to harden up, I removed the remaining 2x4s, then finished those areas. And you could, if you wanted to, just wait to take these 2x4s off until the concrete cures. But if you want a better finish with less blemishes, I would recommend taking these off before it cures. So at this point, we're pretty close to being done. We have just a little bit more trial work to do around the rebar to finish it. But other than that, it's pretty much done. Now it's time for it to cure and harden up all the way. So I'm going to go ahead and wait 24 hours, then come back and start taking off the forms. So it's been 24 hours, and now it's time to start taking off all the forms. So for the most part, all of these forms came out fairly easy. I did have some of the forms where the dirt caved in, and that made it a little bit harder to get those forms out, but overall, it wasn't so bad. After getting all the forms removed, it's time to go ahead and start backfilling around the edges of the footer. After getting all the backfilling done and the edges filled in, we then sprayed everything down with water, and then compacted it with a compactor. That way we have a nice strong base for the concrete basement floor. So now we have a nice and strong concrete foundation footer that's ready for our block foundation wall. So the concrete footer is now done and ready for a block foundation wall. The vertical rebar that's sticking up will tie into the block wall by filling the cells with grout to make a nice strong bond. Here's a quick preview on the construction of my basement addition showing the process start to finish. And I will be releasing a lot more videos explaining some of this process here in the near future. Have yourself a great day and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. This is CLS All in One. If you want to hear more from me, please like and subscribe. And to see more of my videos, just click any of these categories to see more.